stones in his grace. Many believers fall into the habit of merging it through life, working for God's approval. But the truth is Jesus didn't come for you to be enslaved by a spiritual to-do list. The Christian life isn't about marching, it's about dancing to a new beat in Christ's power. Stop marching and start dancing in Christ's saving grace. It's easy for Christians to make their faith about a spiritual to-do list just merging through life, but the Christian life is really about dancing in the grace of God. Have a daily journey through scripture and gives fresh insight on how Jesus is like your dance instructor in life and why you need to keep your eyes on him and follow his lead. It's our hope that this devotional will help your soul dance as you dive into scripture and experience more abundant life in Jesus. Check the fine print. He that falls into sin is a man that raves at it is a sign that boasted of it is a devil. To someone who struggles with habitual sin, all the talk about being dead to sin might sound too good to be true, kind of like the late night TV informerical that promises to clean your dog and restore worn out leader and take inches off your nights with one application and no effort if you buy by midnight on Friday. Yeah, right. Maybe it's time to read a little of the fine print. It's really important. Don't skip this paragraph. Being dead to sin doesn't mean that sin is dead or that we are immune to sin. In Roman 1 part 2 5, sin is a generally a verb, action we do. Starting in Roman 6, sin is a non an entity in deviling sin that uh, internal voice that tempts us is uh, still alive and active in our lives even after we, we trust Christ it is in us but it is not who we are like a silver in my finger it is in me annoying painful but it is not me the voice of endeviling sin is very real and big because it comes from inside us. It leads many to believe we still have a sin nature. Our flesh, our desire to do things in our own strength, independent of God, is still res responsive to, to sin. So even through are in Christ and have his spirit in our spirit when the world Satan the flesh and in deviling sin team up on us the allure of sin is a still a powerful force anytime we don't choose to walk in the spirit Bamu, sin will follow so yes it's going to happen but this is the cool part for sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under law but under grace there is a huge difference between being vulnerable to sin and being mastered by it Jesus, thank you for forgiving all my past, present, and future sins. I realize that endeavoring sin is still a powerful force in my life, but it is not who I am. So I praise you all the more that sin is not my master. I always have the choice to walk by your spirit. Make that choice a habit. Amen. Living in the past tense.
The greatest miracle that God can do today is to take an unholy man out of an unholy world and make him holy, then put him back into that unholy world and keep him holy it again in it. Sometimes I ask people, how are you doing in your spiritual walk? You can usually see it in their discouraged and desperate eyes when it's not going so well. They often respond, well, you know, I am trying really hard to die to sin. They look at me like I am pastor gone off the deep end. When I then ask, we are, why are you trying to do that? When I see the tree clad for a head and raised eyebrow, I know they are re ready to hear something vitally important. Being dead to see does not mean that you should continue to try to die to sin when it happens. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. The word died is in our tense, which means a single action which occurred in the past. It is not in the present tense as in we are dying to sin and it's not in a future tense as one day we will die to sin. It says in the past at some point we die to sin. It's done. It's a present reality and can become your immediate experience. The key is to see yourself already dead to sin with the capacity to choose to act on that truth when temptation comes your way. Let me say that again, just a little differently. The old master is still alive, sin but the old slave has been crucified, your old self. So your old master is no longer your master because you are a new person with a new master, Jesus. The key is not to try to die to sin, but to believe your old sinful self is already dead. When you take that one biblical uh, truth to heart, then our choices and our behavior will be natural extens extensions of that truth. Meditate on this powerful and extremely practical command. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from dead to life and offer every part amen and righteousness. To whom are you offering your body today? Lord God, I offer myself to you. You have brought me from death to life. I surrender to this truth. I quit trying and I offer my body to you to be used as an instrument of righteousness in your hand today. Amen. It's your choice. Understand that the old man is not there. The only way to stop living as if he were still there is to realize that he is not there. Sometimes there really is a black and white in trying to be sensitive to others' beliefs and trying to be open-minded about all ideas. Sometimes we forget that. In many ways, Christianity is an either-or faith. It doesn't leave much in the gray. A lot of questions are answered, true or false. Remember Eden. God said, you can either eat from this tree or this tree. You eat from that tree, you lose this tree and you lose the garden. So don't eat from that tree, eat from this tree. 
It was one whole damn other. Jesus was a struggling, gracious, and accepting, but he drew clear lines between black and white on critical issues such as no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. He was talking about money there, but substitute anything for money and what he is saying is you either love God or forgot it, either or, and when it comes to your spirit. Scripture teaches categorically that it's either dead in sin or alive in Christ. Why am I spending so much time talking about this? Because I am convinced that most believers think that in their essence, in their spirit, in their nature, they are both good and bad. They think they are both righteous and sinful, and as they think in their heart, so they are. This whole issue about being in Christ is not some sort of the theologically gobbledy goop. It is real dear. What we think on a heart level determines how we choose to act and respond in a fallen world. Father, there are some lines in my mind using your word as my guide, I want the deep down th thoughts of my heart to be true so I can live in the truth of who I am in Christ, your Son. Amen.